Shout hallelujah somebody. If you know truly that your help comes from the Lord with divine protection, shout a big hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful that we have a special insurance? You know, the world gives you life assurance. What does it do? When you die, somebody else gets the money. They assure you when you die, somebody else will get the money. God ensures you that you will enjoy all the days of your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what do you want? Do you want insurance or assurance? <laughs> Many of you. What do you want? Assurance or insurance? May you go for insurance. <laughs> May you be insured in Christ. Praise the Lord. We are in Christ. Amen. And as long as we are in him, we are covered in him. Praise the Lord. In him there is life. In him there is light. Outside him there is darkness and trouble. In John chapter 17 he prayed for us. He said they are in the world but they are not they are not of this world. Praise the Lord. Jesus said you are in Nigeria but but you are not a Nigerian. If only that we can comprehend the revelation and the mysteries of God's word. You are in Nigeria. You are in Germany. You are in America. But you are not American. You are not German. You are not African. Amen. Amen. If any man be in Christ. If any man be where? In Christ. So you cannot be in Christ and be in Nigeria at the same time. Whether you are a Christian or you are a Nigerian. You know what I can liken it to? How many of you have known about um, the Holy See? The Roman Catholic Vatican is called. How many of you have heard about the Vatican? Is in Rome, right? In Italy, right? It is in Italy, but it's not Italian country. They have their passport in the Vatican. They have their bank in the Vatican. The Italian police cannot go there and arrest anybody. It's not possible. So they are in Italy, but they are not, they are not Italians. But they exist. So when Italian banks have crisis, they don't have crisis in the Vatican. When there is trouble in Italy, they are exempted from it. But they are there, but they are not there. They have their own passport. They have their own banks in the Vatican. And they have their own security in the Vatican. They are different from Italian police. So why does it sound so strange to us when Jesus said, you are in the world, but you are not, you are not, you are not. And that is the fundamental of our Christian faith. Who are you? Who are you? Are you a Nigerian? Are you a German? Or you are American? Because it is what you declare that is what will follow you. If you say you are a Nigerian, Nigerian trouble will follow you. Amen? Amen. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. We just sang it. From where? From where? So your help does not come from Tinibu. Your help does not come from Biden or Harris. 
They are not your problem. But you can make them your problem by condescend to a human level. You may have flesh and blood, but you are not flesh and blood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For those of you that today is your first time, welcome to God's family church. Amen. Amen. And those of you that you are watching online or in the micro churches, a very, very special welcome to you all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We have a message of gospelology. Please take your seats. We have a message of gospelology. What is gospelology? I just want to give you a quick introduction in case if today is your first time or last Sunday was your first time or last Wednesday was your first time. I just want to give you a quick intro into what gospelology is because you may see gospelology, gospelology written here, written there, and you are beginning to wonder, what is gospelology? Praise the Lord. For you to understand gospelology, you need to understand what technology is. Amen. What is technology? Of course, all of you will know what technology is because we are using technology as we are in service now. Are we not? Yes. We are using technology for the light, for the air conditioning system, for the transmission of this service live on air. We are doing what? We are deploying technology. So technology is the application of scientific wisdom for the convenience or the betterment of life. Application, scientific knowledge, technical knowledge, engineering. Praise the Lord. This is what technology is. When you experience technology, you sit on your chair and you use the remote control to control everything. That is application of science, technology, right? And so you sit one place. For instance, for instance, you can, we have cameras, we have cameras here. And then I can, through my phone, I can check what is going on in different locations here yeah, without getting up from my office or from my room. It's technology, praise the Lord. Now, gospelology is the application of the word of God in the same way to manifest divine realities. Gospelology, like technology, is application of the word. Application of the word. Now, when technology fails, we know because life becomes a little bit uncomfortable. When your air conditioner does not work, you are a bit hot and you are uncomfortable. Isn't that true? When your car stops you on the way, that is a failure of technology. You are uncomfortable. Praise the Lord. The reason why technology will always fail is because humanity is flawed. And so they cannot produce anything perfect. Humanity is imperfect. And so they cannot produce perfection. You can't produce perfection through imperfection. But the thing about gospelology, gospelology has a divine origin. Praise the Lord. The God is perfect and he is able to produce perfection. Shout hallelujah. God is able to produce what? Perfection because what? He is a perfect God. And so, the application of the word of God manifests divine truth in your life. And that's why this church, we are strong on the application of the word. Application of the word. Get the word to work in your life. Make the word work in you. Make the word produce in you. Make the word workable in you. I don't believe in quick miracles. But I believe in established miraculous way of living. Amen. You don't have one time miracle, but you live a miraculous lifestyle. And that is the calling we are called to. Praise the Lord. So, 
when you come to God's family church, one of the things we hear often and often and often again is about your application of the word of God in your life to change you, to transform you. God said, my word will not return back to me void. God is saying, any application of my word will not be empty. If you apply it, it must produce. Because every, it says, the Bible says in the, the book of uh, Proverbs, said, where there is the word of the king, there is power. Amen. Amen. For instance, if Tinibu says that you should be arrested, is there power with that word? Of course there is power in that word. Whether you are guilty or not, if Tinibu says from Abuja that you should be arrested, the people that come to arrest you will not hear anything, isn't it? Even if they are your friends, they will not hear anything. Amen. Amen. But God has said that you are more than a conqueror. God has said, whatsoever that is born of me, whatever I give birth to, the world cannot swallow it. Are you following me this morning? Maybe I'm diverting from the message, but the Lord wants to give you a hot introduction this morning. Listen, listen. There are some families that when you come from it, you cannot be poor, whether you work or not. So now you understand that. You agree with that, right? By bet, okay, let's take the royal family in UK. Amen? Amen. The royal family. Prince, no, no, King Charles II is the king now, right? The mother died. He took over. And when Charles... By the grace of God, live out and suffer his time. If he dies, another person will also take over. When you are born in that royal family, whether you work or not, will you be poor? Will you look forward to eat? Why? Are you not a human being? No, no, no. Are you not a human being? So, if there is an economic crisis in UK, will it touch you? But you are in UK. No, you are in UK. And so, if there is riot in UK, will it touch you? No, I'm asking you, will it touch you? If there is a terrorist attack in UK, near your residence, the royal residence, will it touch you? Because the place is heavily fortified and secured. If there's going to be any attack, they will take you to a secret bunker. Nobody knows where it is, but it exists underground. We don't know how many floors it is underground. Praise the Lord. During the time of 9-11 in the uh, USA, the president was taken to a secret location to keep him from harm. Amen. Now, this is the world and their system of protection. But there is one that created the heavens and the earth. And he says, no weapon. He has said it. He said, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. He said, I am one that created the man that creates the weapon. Are you hearing me? You have to come to a point where we understand who Jehovah is. We should stop embarrassing God. Many people embarrass God daily. They talk God down. They talk hopelessness and helplessness. You embarrass God in your attitude, in your character, in your outburst, in your speaking, in your acting. You embarrass God. You are more than royalty. You said you were not ashamed. Mosquito bite you and gave you malaria. The whole royal creation. We are partakers of divine nature. And you were there telling a doctor, he is a non believer. You are a Christian. You were worshiping when you enter into his office. He said, What happened to you, ma? He said, Mosquito bite me and I got malaria. He said, It's everywhere. 
It's everywhere. Oh, don't worry. I've seen 10 people with mosquito bite. I said, okay, okay, I'm just going to give you three injections today, tomorrow, and day after. He said, maybe him or her. He said, pull down your pants for injection. He said, doctor. He said, pull down. What happened? Mosquito. What is mosquito compared to you? No. You have reduced your life to humanity. You have reduced your life to flesh and blood. But we are not meant to be flesh and blood. You have reduced your life to beggarly victimized person. You talk defeat. You talk lack. You talk hopelessness. Not only do you talk it, you evangelize it. You tell people this country is, is hard. Have you seen a hard country before? Hello? Have you seen a hard country? You need to understand that the word, word of faith works with the word of faith. Did I connect with that? You need to know that the word of faith only works with the word of faith. And we've been dealing with design to grow. Every Christian, when you come to Christ, when you are born again, you are designed to grow. God built you to grow. Going back to Genesis chapter 8, he says, seed time and harvest. He says, shall not cease. And so, I told you last Sunday, there are fundamentals of growth. Number one is seed. Number two is time. Number three is harvest. But people go and they will leave number one, number two, and they come to a point of harvest. Does it work? It doesn't work. It will never work. God said in his word, seed and harvest with time in the middle will not fail. He said, as long as heaven and earth remains. That's what God declared. What is the problem? The problem is that many do not sow seed. And the moment you talk about seed, the, the thing that people think about immediately is about money. But money is the least of it all. Amen. Do you know that how you treat people is a seed? Do you know? The way you treat people is a seed you sow, which will come to you tomorrow. Hello? And Jesus said, the way you let people to handle you, the way you let people to treat with you, deal with people like that. So if you want to have respect, learn to respect others. Do you understand it? If you want to be an elder one day in your life, learn to respect elders. If you want to grow old age and see your children's children, have value for elders. It's very simple. If you want to be in authority, learn to respect those in authority. You know, society is losing dignity and respect because of social media. You get into the bus, you see young people, they are busy with their phone, they can't get up for elders to sit. They will claim they didn't see. And so when they get old, nobody will see them. Sit time. Sit time. You sow it every day. Harvest. A Christian is designed to grow. We are manufactured to grow. If you ever, whatever you want to become, you must learn to sow the seed of it. You must. Without a seed, there will be no harvest. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus said to us, the word of God is the seed. The word of God is the seed. If you know you don't, the way you don't like to be talked to, don't talk to people like that. If you don't like to be called a fool, never call anybody a fool. No, do you understand me? If you don't want to be called an idiot, never call somebody an idiot. No, because it's a seed from your mouth. It's your word. Tomorrow there will be a harvest. God says so. He says seed and harvest. As long as heaven and earth remains, he said it will never cease. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? You want to know why Nigeria is the way it is? Because that's what Nigeria has sowed. That's what Nigeria has planted. And if Nigeria will change tomorrow, we better sow the seed for change today. Talking will not change Nigeria. No, talking will not change the country. It will not change Africa. I can tell you very simple. I can tell you very simple. You went to a driving school. You went to a driving school. You were meant to follow and finish the entire course in the driving school. You just learned how to drive and you jumped out. You said, I can drive now. Go through it. You say, no, 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 no. In fact, I'm, I'm better than my teacher. Praise the Lord. And so you didn't learn traffic signs. You didn't learn traffic rules. And so on the road, when police stop you, you say, get out of my way. That's what you have sold. Amen. Amen. You don't learn discipline on the road. There's discipline on the road. You go from one lane to the other. You drive zigzag. You say, man, I am smart in driving. You are not smart. You are a fool in driving. Do you get it? And so, if you don't go through the process, you will not get the end product. Africans like to go to Europe, go to America, go to anywhere. They would like to go leave Africa. Those people you are going to, they pay the price to develop their country. And when you go there, you mess it up also. They pay the price. In our church in Munich, one time, a lot of people from refugees, they came to the church. And I organized a program for them. And then in that program, near the church, the government in Germany built a brand new building for them. Brand new. Brand new. Like three-star hotel, without exaggeration. I was there. And then I was talking to them. Then some of them were posted there from the church. And I called them. In the service, uh, after service, I, I, I said, let me speak to you. Let me give you a guide to successfully stay in Germany and in Europe. And I said to them, you see where you are? I said, be the ones to clean the place up. Be the one to take care of that place. I said, don't live like others. He said, be different there. Clean up, sweep, do all that you need to do to make sure that place is clean. It was a brand new building. They were the first set of people to be put into that place. It is nothing short of a three-star hotel. The government built it and put them there. I was giving them money every month. Some of them said, yes, pastor. Some of them were dozing and all that. And then they went there. I was told they will eat breakfast and they will leave it on the table. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about Nigerians. I'm not talking about Africans. I'm talking about Nigerians. They, they came to Germany. They were in Munich church. And then I had a program to help them stay good in Europe. Stay good in Europe. And I said to them, when you eat, clean up. When you see the people, be good to them. Greet them. Tell them. Listen, they don't owe you anything. You are a refugee. And so the people that you see that clean up there, thank them, greet them in the morning, be nice to them, sweep up the place. When you see them, should be taken from them and sweep and clean the place. They said, yes, pastor. And uh, after service, they left. It was a fairy tale. Are you hearing me? They went back to the same brand new building, brand new building, and they lived the way they used to live in Nigeria there. They were, in two, three weeks, they were turning that place to a ghetto. And that is why poverty is spiritual. The fact that you went from Africa to Europe does not make you a rich man. Many don't have character. You lack character. Good, good, good job, good job, but character will fire you from the job. A friend of mine, they were working in IBM. I'm telling you a true story. In Canada, IBM, they were working there. And then this Nigerian just got into the job. And his supervisor, a Canadian, he used the washroom. And then as the, as the professor was going, the professor told him, please, when you finish using the washroom, use the brush and brush the toilet. OK, please. And the, 
and the supervisor left. He used the washroom. He said to himself, is it because I'm a black person that he's telling me to wash it? That's what he thought. He said he was working in IBM. It was another Nigerian that was working in the same place that shared this with me because you know, he knew that what the guy did was wrong. And so he came out of the washroom. He didn't brush it. His boss went back, the supervisor, and saw that he didn't do it. The boss took the, took the brush and washed the toilet and flushed it and cleaned it up and came out and didn't say a word. When it was time to fire people, who was the first to go? No, who was the first to go? Your problem is not Nigeria. Your character is the problem. If any man be in Christ. If any man be in Christ. And that is why application of the word is the only thing that can change your life. Amen. Amen. Application of the word. If you don't put the word in you, if you behave like your village people, ah, you will suffer. I know a man, a couple, they were in church, in Munich also. And the husband insisted that the wife must respect him like from the village. If you want to give him, if she wants to give him water, she must kneel down far away in Munich and give water. Hello? And many of you are like that. Your tradition is superior to the word of God in your life. And that is why Jesus said you have made the word of God of no effect in your life by your tradition. How can you come to church and listen to the word of God? I'm not ready to obey. I'm not ready to obey. It is obedience of the word that will change your life. Not the hearing of the word. He says the entrance of the word gives light and understanding. It is not just hearing, but entering into your heart. Let the word, let the word enter into you. Let the word enter into you. God said that those that dwell in Zion shall not say, I am sick. He said, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And God said, I will take sickness away from you. I will take sickness away from you. What is your problem? So serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. And you shall serve the Can God lie? No. God can never lie. He said, and you shall serve the Lord your God. Serve him. Secondly, that's Exodus 23, 25. And God will bless your bread and your water. God will bless your bread and your water. If you will serve me, I will bless your bread and your water. That is a deal. That's a covenant deal. That's a covenant deal. So what do you do? Find a way to serve God. Serve God with all your heart. Serve God in spirit and in truth. Serve God well. And say, Lord, you said in your word, if I serve you, you will bless me. You will do this. Lord, I'm holding you responsible for your word. Perform your word in my life. In Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things. Hallelujah. And all these things. What is all these things? No, what is all these things? It includes food. It includes clothing. It includes houses. If you go back and read from verse 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and read for, he said, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. And now you have learned to worry. And you have learned to speak your worry. Ask yourself, where does high blood pressure come from? Where does stroke come from? When you go outside the word of God, you will get what devil has. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can give reasons why you got the problem, but God will not value it. Amen. Amen. If you make excuse for your limitations, you will give your limitations a dwelling place in your life. If you make excuse for your limits, then your limits will limit you by the excuse. You are told not to worry. A great man of God, one of my mentors, Papa Hagen, 
He said, since he read that scripture, do not worry. He said he has never worried. He lived his life so much worry-free life. Praise the Lord. And he said, the wife said to him one day, I suppose if, if our son would drop, no, no, no. She said, I believe, or I suppose, if our two children would drop and die, you wouldn't care about or worry about it. He said, what, change, what difference will it make if I worry? Praise the Lord. Many of you, you are worried about too many things, and Jesus said, do not worry. It is the world business to worry. The world has to worry because they don't have Jesus. You don't have to worry a thing. As long as Jesus lives, you will surely live. Praise the Lord. Why do you worry? Why do you worry? Come on. Open to Matthew. Praise the Lord. Say Jesus is Lord. I don't know why the Holy Spirit has taken me outside what I planned, but glory be to his name. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. Like I said, if you, let's go to verse 25. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25. Are we there? Yes. Therefore, I say to you, who is talking? Jesus. Who is talking? Jesus. Who is he talking to? Jesus. Come on, everybody respond. Who is Jesus talking to here? Me. Say me. me. Point to yourself. Me. Say me. me. Jesus is talking to me Jesus. this morning. Jesus. And I'm going to hear him. And I'm going to obey him. All right. Praise the Lord. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. <laughs> That's a big one, isn't it? Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, do not worry about it. Or about your body, don't worry about it. Is that truth? Oh, I know some people that have been worried from yesterday about today. Amen. Amen. Do you know that worrying is sin? Hello? Do you know that worrying, to worry is to sin? I'm worried. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? Who knows? You must say for the raining day, oh... Save for the raining day. You must save. I'm not against saving. I don't save, but I'm not against saving. But you that is saving, be careful. Because often, these days, the raining day does not come with rain. It comes with flood. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You saved for the raining day. You didn't save for the flooding day. And so when the flood came, what happened? It carried the bank where your money was. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But Jesus said, therefore I said to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. You know, some people spend more time to dress up to come to church than the time they spend in church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They take their time because they are packaging themselves. They are packaging themselves, not for Jesus. They are eyeing somebody. Hello? They are, I, continue. 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 And so when you come, you are walking like a monster. You want to be noticed. Jesus said, Jesus said, do not worry about what you put on. He said, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? My daughter shared a story about a rich man that was in the hospital. And she was attending to the rich man. 
And then the man, all his expensive clothes has been removed. And he was, he was now wearing the hospital cardigan. All his expensive clothes. And he looked at my daughter and said, what is the use? Expensive cars, expensive clothes, what is it? At the moment of trouble, it will be removed. It becomes a hindrance. Think about it. The things you are fighting for in the last time, they, somebody have to tear it. I was traveling one time in a plane, and a man, well-dressed, well-dressed, he boarded into the flight. He was already seated in the plane. He was sitting at the back of us. And then within a minute, we didn't know what happened. And the man was on the, on the floor, on the aisle of the airplane. And they started announcing, is there any doctor? Because we've not taken off, so the plane was still on ground. And then the, the stewards have to rush to him. And in a moment, in a moment, this fine, polished man, wearing expensive watch and all that, his clothes was torn apart and all that, because they have to press his chest to restore him back to life. Where was the expensive ornament? The designer's shirt. They tore it in the plane there. And they have to call doctors from outside. A man that walked into the plane was wheeled out of the plane. He couldn't get up in a moment. In a moment. The things you are fighting for, where will it take you to? You are so concerned about designers. Do you know, if you don't tell people like me, I wouldn't know you are wearing designers. Yes, and I think there are about 75% like me on earth. Amen? Amen. If you... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The other day, my daughter went to do the, what do you call it? Uh, beauty, what, what is it called? Makeup. No, but that was more than makeup. It was artistic. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, they, they did something on her. When I came to minister, when I saw her like this, I was like, <laughs> oh God, who is that? Oh God, who is that? And then I looked and I realized that that's the same person I used to know. After service, I quit it and said, please wash it. Are you hearing me? They can make you <laughs> artistic, but be careful so that the right people can still recognize you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mommy went to wedding in Winners the other day. We were highly invited and all that. And, uh, you know? <laughs> and uh, Bishop Juno brother, B uh, Pastor Gideon Ayedekwa, He's a close friend of ours. So she went to meet him. The man didn't know her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the pastor, he says, it's me. <laughs> you know, when she was telling me, I was laughing. <laughs> you put a makeup, you need to introduce yourself. And the pastor said, I don't recognize you. <laughs> he said, it's me. He said, oh, OK. Ah, mommy, how are you? So you can be lost in your beauty treatment. Just like in pursuit of fashion, you can be lost. You can be lost from God. You can be lost from Christ. What are you looking for? Reduce your fashion. Increase your passion. Praise the Lord. Where will fashion lead you to the dustbin? Where will passion lead you to the top of the mountain? You arrive there. I was such a fool one time in my life. When I was in school in the UK, buy a designer suit. Designers. For what purpose? To go to a club. You buy designers. We got special cards, special cards from the fashion shop where, where I normally shop. And all those things is to tempt you to spend more, more money. You think they care about you? He said, this is a privilege card. When you, when you come. What kind of privilege? It gives you privilege into my wallet. I mean, if you will brag it. 
It's a privilege card. Privilege card. Praise the Lord. The, there's this ATM card from GTB. What do they call that one? It's a different card from the orange one. I've forgotten what they call it. I, I have it though. Eh? There's something they call that card. It means that your account is a little bit higher than the rest. Praise the Lord. And it has a, it's a different color, different design. Let me tell you, it's a deceit. <laughs> it doesn't do one thing more than the yellow and yellow and the ordinary card. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They sent me a list of uh, lounge, executive lounge, where you can go and rest when you are banking. One in Ikeja, one in the airport. They mentioned some places where executive. Listen, so I will live here to go and look for a sitting room that belongs to a bank in Ikeja. Does it make sense to you? No. What business do I have to go and sit in the city room of a bank? What will they give me there? Tea or coffee, Coke or Fanta? Isn't it? Does that mean anything to me? I don't take Coke. I don't take Fanta. The coffee, I will not like it because I take special coffee. So they give it to deceive you to do more banking with them. Everything that the world gives is to rob you indirectly. Everything the world gives you is to rob you indirectly. Platinum card. Are you platinum? Gold card. What does it do? Does it give you gold? No, does it give you gold? Silver. Does it give you silver? We must know that whatever heaven gives is to upgrade your life. Whatever the world gives is to rob you. And Jesus said to us in Matthew chapter 6, He said, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value? Are you not more valuable than they? Praise the Lord. Say, I am valuable. He says, which of you, verse 27, which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his stature? By worrying, what can you change? No, by worrying, what can you alter? Jesus said that worrying is emptiness. And somebody defined worry as advanced interest payment you make on a trouble that may not come. Did you hear what I said? It's an advanced interest payment on a trouble that may never come. Why do you enjoy worrying? He said, which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Verse 29. And yet I said to you that even Solomon in all his glories was not arrayed like one of these. Jesus is making a comparison that should, 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 should teach us a lesson. If God takes care of the bird, if God takes care of the plant, if God takes care of the vegetable, are you not more, val more valuable than those things? He said, now, verse 30, now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith? Why don't you have faith in God? Why don't you believe? And then verse 1 says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? He says in verse 32, everybody read verse 32 together. Again. Again. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. So worry is unbelief. Worrying means that you are not born again. You are like the Gentiles. Have faith in God. Jesus told us in Mark 11, have faith in God. He said, why do you worry? You worry too much. Instead of worrying, why don't you pray? Why don't you praise? Why don't you worship? No. 
Jesus said, I've warned you. Why don't you meditate upon the goodness and the mercies and the favor of God? Have you thought about it when we talk about Christianity and growth? Have you talked about that? Do you understand what it means? Do you understand what it means when we talk about a Christian growing in all ramifications? You grow. We, we hear that Abraham was rich. We hear that Abraham was very rich. Have you asked yourself, how did Abraham become rich? Abraham to Abraham. How did he become rich? We hear that Isaac was rich. We hear that Jacob was rich. We hear that Joseph was rich. We hear that Moses was How did these people become rich? A Christian that trusts God cannot be impoverished. Do you understand it? Somebody tells you, I will anoint you and you will prosper. There's no anointing for prosperity if God has not blessed you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible said that Abraham went to Egypt during the famine and lied about the wife Sarah and they took the wife and gave to Pharaoh. And the Bible said that God was angry. And then Pharaoh discovered that ah, this is not the sister, this is the wife. He called, uh, he called Abraham. He said, come and carry your wife, please. So you want to curse our land. He said, carry your wife. And the Bible says, Pharaoh blessed Abraham, blessed him with cattle, with cow, with sheep, with flocks, and gave him servants on top. Ask yourself, where does Hagar come from? She was a part of the blessing from Pharaoh. Do you understand it? This God we are serving, when he's happy with you, listen, <clears throat> this God we are serving, when he's happy with you, forget Nigeria. He will send somebody from Cotonou, from Lome, from Ghana, from Cote d'Ivoire, from Cameroon, from Egypt, from America, just for your sake. When he is happy with you, he will look through and look through and look through and look through and say, I am about to do something special. I am going to do something for Bimbo or for Kainde or for Tony. I'm going to do a miracle. And he looks for Ikeja, he didn't see somebody. He looked in Lagos, he didn't see somebody. He looked in Nigeria, he didn't see somebody. He spoke to them, they did not listen. He said, I will go outside Nigeria and get help for you. Are you hearing me this morning, somebody? I have the preaching anointing this morning. I have prepared to teach, but it's changed. It changed. And I like it when the Holy Ghost takes over. I told you this story many times. Many times. A man in Ogun State in the village. Many of you know Ogun State, don't you? A man of God in the village, he needed help. He prayed and prayed and prayed. There was no help coming from Ogun State or Lagos State or Nigeria. And the Lord went to speak to somebody in America and said, there is a need in Ogun State in Nigeria. The American has never been to Nigeria before. And to get Nigeria visa is a problem those days. Problem, serious problem. And this man went to Nigerian embassy in Washington. And he got a visa to come to Nigeria. He came to Nigeria, got a taxi, told the taxi driver, take me to social so place in Ogun State. The taxi man said, no problem. That when God is in charge, everybody will answer to you. Everybody will hear to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. The taxi drove this man right into that village where the pastor was believing God for a miracle. And he said, you are so, so, so. The pastor said, yes. He said, God has sent me from America. I have come to meet the need. I have come to deliver the miracle to you. He brought out dollars and dollars and dollars and dollars and got to the man and said, I am going back. He made a U-turn, went back to the airport, but then the same flight went back to America. He came to Nigeria in 24 hours to answer your prayer. And he said, I am the Lord, I change not. And Peter said in Acts chapter 10, he said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. What he did before, he can do again. How many are faithfully expecting him to move in that direction? Isaac, the seed of the promise. The Bible said there was another famine and people were going to play better 
place just like they are doing Japa or Japa, whatever you call it. People are running away from Nigeria and Isaac wanted to go. God said, don't go anywhere. The Bible said he stayed. The Bible said he stayed. But there was famine everywhere. God said, don't go. I am the creator of this land. Heaven and earth answer to me. He said, don't go. I will bless you in this land. I will make you a blessing. Praise the Lord, somebody. The Bible said where there was famine, Isaac sowed in that famine, in that famine, in that famine. And the Bible said he got a hundred food. And the Bible described his prosperity. The man continued to be wealthy and continuously become wealthy to the point that the Philistines became afraid of him. They came to him, the king came and said, we have noticed your prosperity. Promise us that you will not fight against us. Praise the Lord. It was famine. The Bible said, as it went to dig the well that the father Abraham dug, they dug the first well, there was water they took from him. The second one he dug, there was water they took from him. Hey, hey, they can never take prosperity from you. You know why? What makes you rich is on the inside them. If they take your clothes, if they take your shoe, why are you crying? Why are you complaining? They took it to make room for more abundance. Why don't you let it go and say, Lord, whoever that took it, bless the person. Lord, the hundredfold is coming. Praise the Lord. But they took your shoe. You cost everybody. You even almost got them to come and swear with the Bible. Swear if you took my shoe. Swear if you took my shoe. And when you come to church, you are checking everybody's leg. <laughs> Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise the Lord. He is good. All everything that has bread. 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 You saw something like your shoe. You didn't know that the devil, Jesus said, seek and you shall find. He didn't tell us what you will find. When the moment you begin to seek and look for what you shouldn't look for, the devil will bring the picture you are looking for. Are you hearing me? And that is why you need to be careful with your life. The moment you begin to hear things, they were talking about you. And so you open your ear and said, I want to know if they are truly talking about me. Oh, you will hear them talking about you. Even if they were not talking about you, listen, seed and harvest. Seed and harvest. The moment, expectation is a seed. Many don't know it. Many don't know it. Expectation is what? It's a seed. You sow it into your life. I know the children don't like me. And surely you will hear them speaking against you. You know why? You put it in their heart. Amen. Amen. I know that my wife, my wife is not honest with me. You will catch her lying because you are the one that professed her into existence. Are you hearing me? You said that you are feeling like you are getting sick. You will get sick because you prophesied it. It's a seed. You will get what you say. That's what Jesus said to us in Mark 11. Until you change your speaking, your level will not change. I'm talking to somebody today about gospelology. God meant gospelology to change our lives. God meant his word to program us in the life in its fullness and with all the goodness that comes with it. Do you think? If you see Dan Gote children begging for bread, won't you be shocked? No, won't you be shocked? If you see Dangote, forget Dangote, San Wolu. If you see San Wolu begging bread, the children begging bread, won't you be shocked? Why? No, why? He is only a governor of Labour State. Why are you surprised that the children are begging bread? And now you are the son of the Most High God. You are the created and made in his image. Are you hearing me? We, you, you have embarrassed God to the point that even the name of God stinks in your mouth. David said, I've been young. Now I am old. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken 
nor his seed beg bread. Why are we seeing the seed of the righteous begging bread now? No, why are we? There was famine. God said to Isaac, don't go. I will bless you in this place. He stayed. He planted. And the Bible says he became very wealthy. In, in famine, he became very wealthy. What about Jacob? Jacob worked for a gangster called Laban, his uncle. He was a gangster. Are you hearing me? He was an expert in manipulation and in lies. And Jacob account said that he changed his wages 20 times. Imagine a man, you are uncle. You, you, know, you are talking about your office, your boss. Now imagine you are uncle. You are uncle dealing with you wickedly. Dealing with you. Many of you are. Ah, Peter said to us, it is a good thing if we do good and suffer for it. But we are not willing to suffer when we do good. That's a problem. That's a problem. He said it is a good thing and God will bless you for it. If you do good and you have to suffer for it. And you have to suffer for it. And you have to suffer for it. He said, he said it is good because God will bless you. But Christians are not willing to suffer for doing good. Are you hearing me? No, do you understand the way the scriptures work? Do you understand the way the scriptures work? Do you understand the way the scriptures work? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was listening to a man of God yesterday night. And he was teaching. He was teaching. He said something. He said, sons must of necessity suffer. Are you hearing me? He said, sons, I think that's Pastor Romire, yes. How many of you know him, Pastor Romire? I was listening to him. He said, if you are a son, you must suffer before you can manifest. But many want to be sons without suffering. Jesus is our example. As a son, he suffered because the father meant it to be like that. Do you know what suffering brings to your life? Discipline. Humility. No. No. You think that suffering is a bad thing totally. No. Suffering brings exaltation. Suffering brings honor in your life. Many of you will not like to suffer. And he was teaching yesterday, Pastor Romero, he said something. He said, he said, any son that will not be under authority is not a son. No matter how you claim it. Any son, and he said on that thing, this is going back to Hebrews uh, 13, he said, those that are, the Bible said, if you are without discipline, you are illegitimate. And then in some scripture, it said, bastard. It's in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said yesterday, and I, I connect with it. He said, a bastard is not just the one without a father. Also the one without the discipline. Because that's what actually that scripture says. He said, if you are without discipline, then you are illegitimate. You are. It means that no son can be without discipline. And it means that if you are ever without discipline, you don't have a father. Even though the man may be there, but you don't have a father. And without discipline of suffering, you cannot become big with God. Because Christ is our example. He suffered unto death. Even a shameful death. Even a shameful death. Christ died for us. And we are to follow his pattern. And Peter said it is a good thing. It is a good thing when you suffer for doing what is right. This is where it is difficult for we to handle. And until we come to handle that aspect, we will not emerge. There are many Christians in poverty today because they refuse to be under authority. You are graduated, you have your master's, you have your, you have your PhD, you have your diploma. None of those things will make you if you are a Christian. If you are a Christian, none of those things will make you. 
Are you hearing me? Mr. Pearson, he was one of the former black executives of Time Warner Corporation in America. An American, he's still alive today. He said something. He said, even in a place like America, even in a place like America, he said, if somebody don't open the door for you in America, you cannot enter. Mr. Pearson, he's still alive. He was one of the highest executives in Time Warner Corporation, the owners of CNN. So they are global company. He said, no matter how educated you are, even for a black person, he said, you still need somebody to open that door for you to enter. And now, you, in the locality where you are, you think you don't need anybody. That's why you are left the way it is. What do you need? You need a teacher to tell you the right way. Are you hearing me? Laban cheated Jacob, but he taught Jacob a lesson. Are you hearing me? Jacob cheated Esau one time. But by the time Laban dealt with him, he never cheated anybody in his life. Are you hearing me? Yes. Ask Jacob when you get to heaven. <laughs> and that is what suffering does. It brings an end arrogance in your life. Because by the thing you suffer, you learn to treat people with ah. God said to Israel, be nice to strangers. But he said, because once you were strangers in Egypt. And so, out of history, you can form that tomorrow. No, I feel like preaching this morning. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so God made Isaac rich. God made Abraham rich. God made Jacob rich. God made Joseph rich. What about Moses? Acts chapter 7. The Bible tells us Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Who taught him? Who paid his school fees? No, who paid? Egypt educated their enemy. Are you hearing me? Egypt did what? And the enemy you are causing may be the one that will pay your school fees. But you have not seen God in that dimension. And so you are praying. Scatter them. Kill them. Destroy them. Dig a hole. Put them. Bury them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. They must die. They will die with your school fees. There are good enemies. Hello? There are what? Saul and David. David has never been a king before. He went to serve Saul. Saul tried to kill him, but God protected him. But did Saul teach him something? Yes. What did Saul teach him? How not to be a bad king. Are you hearing me? That bad teacher you are looking at have something that will discipline your flesh. Hagar ran away from Sarah because Sarah, Sarah was harsh. An angel met. An angel met her and said, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Hagar, where are you going? He said, I'm coming from, where are you going? He said, go back to your madam and submit. And submit. And submit. Do you read your Bible? Do you even understand it? Do you understand how that incident happened? First, listen, read the scriptures. Sarah did not like the conduct of Hagar. She didn't deal with Hagar directly. Women, listen to me. You are too lawless in your home. Just because you are married does not make you the head of that family. Are you hearing me? Before you say, this is my marriage home, this is my marital home, before you came, that home existed. So who was the head when you were not there? And now you are going about, this is my marriage home. So what? Listen to me. Sarah did not like Hagar's behavior. She didn't talk to Hagar. She did not. She went to Abraham. Abraham went to God. Do you see the pattern of God? No, many of you will go to Hagar. I'm the one that brought you. I'm the one that gave you. The, and, and you are careless and lawless. Who are you? When Hagar went to God, what did God say? God said, don't worry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even when she saw, the Bible says she saw Ishmael mocking, mocking, 
mocking who? Isaac. She didn't go to Hagar. Who did she go to? The husband, Abraham. But you, modern women today, what will you do? You will beat Hagar on the spot. Beat the son also on the spot and carry your own. He said, you want to share the inheritance with my son, my son, my only son. God get me. Blah, 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 blah. And you are talking, you will cancel the destiny of Isaac. No, should I tell you scriptural truth? Should I tell you scriptural truth? A woman supposed to be under the spiritual covering of the husband all times. That is where you are safe and secured. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. You confuse yourself with love. What is love? Go and read 1 Corinthians 13. You want to talk to your husband, he's watching football. He say, if you love me, if you truly, truly love me, you won't watch the football while I'm talking to you. You are a fool. <laughs> How long is the football? 90 minutes. So that 90 minutes, if you, you, know, you are a witch. Because you are manipulating. I have to stop here. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Say I am a new creation. I am in Christ. I am, in Christ. I am not a Nigerian. Nigerian. I may be in Nigeria, <laughs> but I am not a Nigerian. I don't function with Nigerian system or African system. I use the gospel system. Somebody shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! 